Alright, here we are back again, folks, with the Beezer Project. Um, so, bottom man came back right here. It's all looking nice and neat. Now, on here is rebuilt. So, about to do the top end here. Cam's already in it. You can see that down there. It's all greasy. Greased up and ready to go. Um, the small end, con rods right here, connecting rods. The bush, it's all new. I had to go to the ace today and get some wood. Got a big old piece of wood. It's supposed to be like 5 eighths, 5 eighths square and like 9 inches long. But you need this wood to go underneath the pistons to hold them. You gotta bring them down, bottom dead center, and it stops them from doing all this back and forth stuff when they're resting on there. When you're bringing the, the cylinder block, the barrel, the jug, what have you. There's like 20 names for everything. Everybody calls everything 20 different things. So it's funny with the books too, because I have like five books on this bike rebuilding this engine and they all have something different and they all leave stuff out and they all have you know stuff the others don't have and so anyway these blocks um, these pistons bottoms of the skirts the skirts gonna rest on them so I got them out here um, these rings the set of rings says that they're for the stock def, the ring grooves. So I'm going to have to take my caliper and go down in there and see how deep those grooves are. And then go to the book and find out what the stock depth is supposed to be and uh, make sure that this is all right. I don't imagine that they'd give me the wrong stuff, but, you know, you never know. Um, um, so, yeah. The little wrist pins or circ clips or wrist pin circ clips. Some people call them wrist pins. The English, this is a beezer, so most English people call this a, a gudgeon, like a gudgeon pin. It's a wrist pin, you know. So, you can see the oil, oil holes down the bottom. These uh, pistons are pretty trick. I got like extra oiling holes drilled in them, like machined in them, in the bottom where the bottom ring goes. So both of these are all good to go. Um, you should always check the the cut in the top of the dome, because you know depending on what kind, if it's just flat or if it has these cuts for the squish, better combustion, like Hemi, you know different heads have cuts. They're different. The bottom of the head. It's uh, hemispherical and whatnot, and some are just domed, and some are, you know. So you got to make sure when you these have to be facing the right way because the intakes and the exhaust, with the valves coming banging, you know, those that squish is supposed to do certain a certain thing, you know, it's atomizing the the gas and the swirl and the gas escaping and whatnot. I mean, that's a little advanced if you don't know what I'm talking about, you know, whatever, don't worry about it. We're talking about just putting this back together. Um, so, I'll show you these real quick. I wish, you know, you can put some con rods have needle bearings. These have a bushing, brand new. Ugh, watch out, these cardboard's on here for the, Cardboard's on here, it doesn't bang stuff up and whatnot, keeps it all nice and protected. Flywheel, so you know, I'm gonna crack job recording. Just a little bit of plastic over here, studs and rubber band, does the job. Where did that puppy go? Uh, so it flew off here. Oh, there it is. So I had to add to keep this thing kind of a uh, like all covered up because I got a bead blast cabinet here and aluminum oxide and walnut shells and all that other good stuff. You know, 
when you're doing stuff, you know, it causes, you got stuff in the air and stuff, you don't want that stuff getting in, like, your carbs and, you know, your other projects, en engine projects and stuff, you know, so keep everything covered up. Um, what else? Yeah, so get these rings on here. We're going to go from the bottom up. You always go from the bottom up when you're, in, you're installing them. And then, um, just, you know, you square a little bit of an engine wall on them. So the block will slide over them really nice. you got to stagger them. They're going to be 120 degrees, like uh, 2 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 10 o'clock. You don't ever want the ring gaps to line up because then all your gas will escape down through the bottom, you know. If you have one of your rings upside down, you'll know because your bike will smoke like a mofo. So the tapered one, it's like the middle one, it's normally depending on the ring set, but they have a taper, the taper should be facing up. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk more about it as I'm doing it because I'm going to record it as I'm doing it. I'm just showing you what I got going here. You know, we got a pretty little girl right here. Gasket sealer, all these gaskets, the heads up top. So I was just cleaning these off, scraping them. I got to clean them up a little bit better, but getting all the old gasket material off these, you know, it's the rocker box cover, timing, primary cover, you know. So, um, yeah, we're going to be about ready to fire this thing up pretty soon, hopefully. Got my uh, ignition in here. So, this one, you know. And, uh,. All my old ass parts, old clutch, old sprocket, all the stuff that was no good, garbage. You know, we just placed everything. So, you know, wrist pins, valves, you know, the old points ignition. I went over to electric, electronic ignition, you know, which is uh, better. And then, as far as like, if you don't want to be doing a bunch of maintenance, it's better because you have to change the points all the time because. This mechanical electronic stuff. You don't have to do any maintenance, but the bad thing is that if you break down on the side of the road, unless you have a spare one with you, like these points, you can play with them on the side of the road. You can, you can get down, you can you can limp your way home, you know. Electronic ignition, you can't. So, but whatever's. All right, that's it. Over now, folks.